Wait, I think I hear a baby crying. <laughs> ah, that has to be my baby. Let's do this real quick. Uh, I was going to, let's just get to it. Okay. In this episode, we talked about Nigerians protesting even as Buhari visit New York City for the UN General Assembly. Also, Uncle Femi Adeshino did it again. He just opened his mouth like that. But gotta said something that doesn't make any sense. Also, we talked about the sudden death of Dr. Obadiah Mailafia. He was 64 years old. In Rwanda, popular hero of the Hotel Rwanda movie has been sentenced to 25 years in prison. In Sudan, a coup almost happened last Tuesday. Day. Find out why the leader of the coup that happened in Guinea snubbed Ecowas. Also, I introduced you guys to a Nigerian woman that makes a cream that reverses bleaching. Mm -hmm. Don't forget to click on the timestamp below to fast forward to whatever story you want to listen to. I'm sorry, I need to go. My baby is crying. Hurry over the camera. Baby. Oh, she's smiling. Mm -hmm. I love you. Your girl at your left. Buari is a terrorist. Buari is a terrorist. We need the world to declare me yet yala group as a terrorist organization. Uncle, wait now. I'm still introducing. Wait, was he protesting against Buari? Ah, uh -uh, why didn't you tell me now? Oh yeah, let him let him speak. This is America. This is not Nigeria where the DSS will arrest you or SARS or the police. You know, for saying that Buari is protecting terrorists. Stop the federal government of Nigeria and stop giving them loan. Stop giving them arms and nomination. They turn it again, the people of Nigeria. In fact, it wasn't just my uncle. A number of Nigerians protested against the Buhari administration in New York. Also, IPOP members had their protest at the UN. Make way for us. Go behind, go behind. Go behind. Freedom of Martin and the Carlo. And Odudua Nation, the Yoruba Nation, also had their own protest at the UN. Now, the funny thing is, some people also gathered themselves to protest against the protesters. Ha <laughs> Does that make sense? Eh? Yeah, you guys. You said, you said the government does that. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. We gotta get rid of the government. Yeah. Wait, that man is not a Nigerian. Play that one more time. Yeah, you guys. You said, you said the government does that. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. You, you get what I'm saying? Eh? And he's protesting against Nigerian protesters. Ha ha for that. In fact, looking at those pictures, this video, I can also see that we have some Hispanics and at least one white guy among the protesters. So what part of Nigeria are you? I'm not. You're not a Nigerian. So how then you're not a Nigerian and you're protesting for Nigeria? Well, anybody's black. You know what I'm saying? I'm protest for them. But where are you from though? I just want I'm to know. Here, where I'm here. So you're not from Nigeria? No. How come you have Nigeria and you're here? I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I should have said that. Hello brothers. Is it okay if I talk to you guys on camera? Uh, yeah, I see your plaque that says stronger, uh, stronger together. So what part of Nigeria are you from, sir? Huh? I can see my sister. I just want to know what part of Nigeria are you from? We all are from there. I'm from the same part you from. You have paid people in New York to stage a protest. Ah, Buhari people, hey, Bedwalon, why are you not afraid? Obviously, these were just random people who needed extra cash. <laughs> now, according to Sahara reporters, you guys know them, they never lie. They said that the Nigerian government paid these protesters $50 an hour. I said, eh, Falda. Me, I protest for anybody. I help a lot of people. So you were paid to do this? Yeah. Or you were paid to do this? I just, I just joined them with everybody. Uh, because you did not know. Black, white. No, I understand. It, it is good to support brothers, to support the uh, culture. Oh, 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 I understand that. It's yeah, not your problem. It's not your fault. You're doing what they asked you to do. Actually, they said that there was a man that was given the contract. This was a whole contract. <laughs> I 
they contracted it out for somebody to find recruiters to pay them 50 50 dollars per hour now to the important issue move closer my people you guys remember my uncle now but after me yes he has done it again as you must have heard the united arab emirates uae recently named another six nigerians as sponsors of boko haram now channels tv was asking uncle femi about this but to our shock he said that the government of buari is not interested in naming or shaming this sponsor so the united arab emirates recently also came out not the first time to name names six nigerians were indicted in those funding terror globally yeah thank you naming and shaming will not be the motive rather bringing malefactors to justice will be it wait a minute you don't want to name them but you said that you will bring them to justice <laughs> how exactly how but i feel me in case you are watching sir eh? thank god that the uae mentioned their names eh? these are their names you can find their names we wanted to put up their pictures but so many people were bearing the same names but at least you can see their names even now they may sweep it under the carpet it's bad enough that another country is the one doing your investigations for you ah, ah. of course nigerians did not spare my uncle you know <laughs> what are nigerians saying about this skills to trap said i'd rather watch paint dry than listen to femi adesina ah I'm sorry, Uncle Femi. Please, no vex. Also, <laughs> read one short tone was said. I bet this is all we'll be hearing through his tenor concerning that. Mm -hmm. I have a feeling, my brother, we are on the same page. Also, Olarewa Jinodu said, How many people has this Yaya government prosecuted for acts of terrorism against the state? Thank you very much. That is the question we've all been asking. Anagboso C. Nedu says, And then, what is Mnandekano doing in DSS's custody? Mm, 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 mm. Also, Leslie Asagba said it becomes very annoying and irritating when you refer to Nigeria and justice at the same time. <laughs> Does Nigeria have a legal system? <laughs> Nigerians, why are you guys not nice to my uncle? Ah, Uncle Femi, please, no vex. Eh, in case you're watching, just be doing this. Okunola Olamu Yuwa said Uncle Femi will definitely make the heaven of liars. Eh? Just imagine the spokesman of the president. Did you? Heaven of liars. Okay, I think he's speaking in parables. <laughs> How about you guys? What can you be gentle with my uncle? Eh, Uncle Bola Femi, in case you're watching. In fact, I have missed you on this show. Please don't mind Nigerians. All of those people are abusing you. They don't know that you're just doing your job, eh? <laughs> You're just doing your job, but I just have one question. Tori Tambaro Ninseru Asifito Mojeni. Translate that to English. Of course, you don't know. Edaku say Niruni, but I'm it's just I'm, I'm asking an innocent question. What happened to you? Seriously, but Edaku because we are very very confused. I'm just asking you for a friend because this is not how to talk. You talk as if the Nigerians that you are talking to as if we are stupid. Emma Biru, that is why we are wondering what happened to the peripheral level of your photosynthesis, especially when you are addressing issues of terrorism. How can you? Son, as if you are protecting the integrity of sponsors of Boko Haram at the expense of innocent people that are being killed every day in Nigeria. Ah, Ebe Rolon Brafemi, Emma Jango Junior, do not let me look you in the eye. We're getting worried about you. Say, Sepe animal, Leria, Sarah, you, Bono, Uncle, please come out clean. Tell us exactly what is happening with you. Emma Bino, all these questions, they are innocent questions. For Nigerians, you know me, I can never question your integrity or who you are. Meanwhile, retired policemen and women are also protesting unpaid pension in Abuja. <laughs> I served as a member policeman for 28 years out of that 35 years. For 28 years, I visited the whole existence of Nigeria. But exactly what is our problem in this country? I don't know, because we don't pay teachers, we don't pay doctors, we don't pay them well, we don't pay them on time, and apparently we also don't pay policemen and women. Who exactly do we pay? Is it just politicians? And unfortunately for the retired officers, some Nigerians don't care about them, even when they were protesting, because of how the police manhandle people in Nigeria, especially the fact that many of them will take bribe at the roadside and so on, you know? You don't see them when the robbers are operating, they come after the robbers have left. But at the same time, though, when you take a critical look at this issue, the fact that the government does not pay them well or pay them on time. It's also one of the reasons why they harass people. But whether you like them or not, they've worked all those years, they've served the country, the government should please pay their pension. And speaking of harassment, okay, this is really heavy to talk about, but you guys remember my father, Dr. Obadiah Maliafia, the former deputy governor of Central Bank of Nigeria, a columnist for Vanguard newspaper, and a former presidential candidate of the African Democratic Congress, ADC. The man has been spilling a lot of truth on television about this administration exposing a lot of atrocities. Do you think the government is unwilling or unable to protect the people of Southern Kaduna? In fact, it is not only unable, it is unwilling 
and we have good reason to feel that they are part and parcel of the killers. The body language of this administration, the body language of the state government shows clearly that they have a hand in the killing. Wow. In an interview last September, he said that one of the northern governors is a key sponsor of terrorism in Nigeria. I have met with some of the bandits, one or two who have repented. They told us that one of the northern governors is the commander of Boko Haram in Nigeria. Boko Haram and the bandits are one and the same thing. They have a sophisticated network. And shortly after that, the DSS started inviting him for interrogations. Well, this was him after one of such interrogations, talking to people. I am the voice of thousands of voiceless people. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Oh, yes. Muslim youths have taken me as their voice. Yes. Yes. That's right. Christian youths have taken me as their voice. Yes, yes. No. Yes. He then said in another interview that the Nigerian government is trying everything to take his life. I'm in hiding. Right now, not even my wife knows where I live. What they planned was that they will keep me there and interrogate me till past midnight. And they had already paid somebody who's on death row that in the middle of the night, he will just get up and kill me. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Obadiah died last Sunday at the University Teaching Hospital in Guagualada, Abuja. According to the Middle Belt Forum, they said that there's foul play in his death. They said that he got sick uh, upper Sunday and that uh, when his wife took him to the CBN hospital, that they treated him shabbily until a senior medic put him on oxygen. And then they gave him the option of going to either Guagualada Hospital, the National Hospital, or EHA Clinic. Now, the wife chose EHA Clinic, but getting there, they didn't want to accept him till another case from a top management of the hospital. But after some hours, they told the wife that they didn't have adequate equipment to take care of him and asked that she takes him to Gagwalada Teaching Hospital. And then they said that on getting there that the doctor on duty insisted that they must pay 600,000 naira before any treatment and that he refused to place him on a ventilator even though he was complaining that he was losing his breath, that he couldn't breathe. His son abroad sent medical consultants there and the doctor on duty got angry, saying that nobody can teach him how to do his job. And then when the man stopped breathing, the wife said that she could still feel his pulse. They told the doctor to place man pressure on his chest to resuscitate him, but he refused. The man said he's been declared dead and there was nothing he could do. Ladies and gentlemen, that was how Dr. Obadiah died. You know, there's just, there's so much. There's a lot of things wrong with this story. There's so much that I would like to say right now, but I can't even imagine what his wife and children are going through. I mean, he was indeed a voice for the voiceless, not just for thousands of people like he thought, but for millions of people. There are so many of us that never met him, but we felt like he's our father because he spoke on our behalf. And to see him die like that, it's just, it's heartbreaking. We've lost a voice. We've lost a man of courage. My brother, Dr. Obadiah Melafia, you will not die in vain. An individual who had a close touch with him, I saw the embodiment of somebody who wanted great reforms for the betterment of the citizens of this country. May he so rest in peace. Our deepest condolences to his family. By the way, when it comes to medical negligence in Nigeria, so many people have been victims. Whether you are a rich person, a big person or not, so many people that I know personally have been victims. For how long would this go on? Let me know what you guys think about this story. Once again, our deepest condolences to his family. May you so rest in peace. You guys know I don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. <music> Moving on to Rwanda, guys. The hero of that popular movie, Hotel Rwanda, Mr. Paul Rusesa Begina, has been sentenced to 25 years in prison. Remember that he was illegally arrested last year. He boarded a plane from Dubai going to Burundi, but the plane landed in Rwanda, where he was immediately arrested and has been in jail since that time as the court proceedings were going on. Prior to his arrest, he was very outspoken against Paul Kagame, the president of Rwanda. Rusesa Begina said that he was tricked by a pastor in August of 2020 to take Taking a trip to Burundi for what he believed was a speaking engagement, only for him to find himself in Rwanda. Wow, I was like, tricked by a pastor? The devil is a liar. He was charged with funding a terrorist group that has killed nine people. His family has denied it. He was charged with terrorism and related offenses. Prosecutors 
said he was behind a series of attacks that happened in Rwanda three years ago. Rusesa Bagina denied it. Rusesa Bagina is a Belgian citizen and a resident of the US. Both governments have criticized the trial. Rwanda's government says justice has been delivered. He stopped going to court months ago, actually, saying that he would never get fair judgment in Kagame's administration. Now, this is what his daughter said. My father was tortured, kidnapped, denied his basic right, and then now they just gave him a guilty verdict. The co-accused came on the stand and said that they had been forced and coerced and tortured into saying false things against my father, and the witnesses are paid a government agents. Wow. Now, what worries me is not just how they gave him 25 years, but the fact that critics of Kagame are now dying mysteriously in prison. You guys remember the gospel artist Kizito Mihigo that I talked about? He died in custody. Also, at the beginning of this month, another musician, Jay Poli, died in custody. Jay Poli had been singing and rapping about social issues in Rwanda, criticizing the government of Kagame with style in his songs. You know, he won't name names, but he will say things like, people are silent, but it's not that the people are stupid. You get what I'm saying? So, well, the government said that he was arrested for possessing marijuana and also a fake COVID certificate. He was in prison waiting for another court date when he died. They said that he drank an alcoholic concussion that he made in prison and that that was what killed him. That was what the government said. Uh, meanwhile, it's not just musicians. Some are loyalists of Kagame who leave Rwanda and start speaking out against his government are also being eliminated in foreign countries. He's accused of silencing opponents. South Africa's investigators said Kagame Kagame's government was directly involved in the killing of one of his critics, Patrick Karagia, in Johannesburg in 2014. Kigali has denied the accusations and any involvement in the unsolved murders of several Rwandan dissidents. And now Dr. Rises Abegina is sentenced to 25 years in prison. He's 67 years old, so that means that he's meant to be in prison until he turns 92. Now, I know that Kagame has transformed Kigali, the capital of Rwanda. We all see the pictures of the roads, the nice buildings, and yes, they have more women in parliament in Rwanda, although that's also because a lot of men were killed during the genocide. However, when was the last time that you heard that people protested in Rwanda against anything, anything? Your president has been in power for more than 20 years and nobody is protesting this? How is that possible? Even when he changed the constitution to allow him to stay till 2034, they said that it was the people that wanted him to stay. Is it possible that people are not allowed to speak out? They said that he's doing good, but does that mean that he's the only one that is able to do the job? I just would like to hear what you guys think about Kagame's administration and his attitude towards anyone that criticizes his government. Also, let me know what you think about this man's 25 year sentence. You guys know I don't know much. Guess what? I'm just in the Moving on to Sudan, guys. A coup almost happened last Tuesday. Yep, that's according to the ruling body in Sudan, known as the Sovereign Council. You guys remember that their former president, Omar al Bashar was kicked out in 2019 after almost three decades in power. And since then, the country has been in a fragile power-sharing deal between the military and civilians. So they said that it was the loyalists of the former president, Omar al Bashar that tried to stage a coup, that they wanted to take over power. And speaking of coups, ECOWAS, they said they would freeze the financial assets of the coup leaders in Guinea. You, you guys remember that they had a coup recently in Guinea and that they would prevent them from traveling. Because of the recent coup that ousted their 83-year-old president, Afar Konde, who was doing his third time by fire by force. You know, I think it's a good thing that ECOWAS wants the military to hand over power to civilians to the point of threatening to freeze their assets, their bank accounts, preventing them from traveling. But why didn't they say the same thing when the president decided to do third time? Wouldn't that have been wonderful? Now, the interesting thing is the coup leader basically told the delegation of ECOWAS that he could care less. <laughs> He said he could care less about their sanction. I was like, dang! No respect for ECOWAS, can you imagine? So the president of Ghana actually went to Guinea to negotiate with the military to release the Oyster president. But the soldiers refused. In fact, the coup leader said, well, as soldiers, there's nothing in our account. I'm like, dang! So the good thing, though, is that the military promised to hand over power back to civilians in a matter of weeks. Let's hope that they keep their promise. Let me know what you guys think about ECOWAS threatening the coup leaders in Guinea while they didn't do the same thing when the president decided to do it all the time. Let me what you guys think about that. You guys know I don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. 
So, real quick, huge shout out to a Nigerian woman who is making a body cream that reverses bleaching. Yeah, so introducing Fab Skin Remedies. Oh, by the way, she has no idea that we are doing this ad for her. Ah, ah, it is a surprise from somebody that cares about her. That is all that the person said we should say. He said, ah, I shouldn't have said that it's a he. The person said, <laughs> so this person said that the ad is being done by somebody that cares about you, my sister. Somebody must be in love with you. I don't <laughs> But he says, I mean, the person says not to mention his or her name. You know, we are not supposed to say whether it's a he or a she. Did I say he? Ladies and gentlemen, please meet my beautiful sister. She is so gorgeous, girl. If you don't like her, I don't I'm learning you to wobola. Yes. So this anonymous was the one that paid for us to tell you guys about her product. Take a look at some of the before and after pictures of some of her customers. Wow, I'm like, wait, what? Huh, that's amazing. So, if you bleached your skin, <laughs> but now you decided you want to go back to your natural skin, please visit my sister. You can find her on Instagram. That's the best way to reach her. And according to her website, she's using organic ingredients. I'm like, this is really cool. So you can contact her on Instagram. But if you live in Lagos and you would like to visit her store, this is her store. beautiful you see auntie knows what she's doing now the address is on the screen but the best way to contact her like i said is through instagram this is her instagram handle and if you've used her product before let us know about your experience in the comment section thank you so much my sister for what you're doing a lot of people will definitely benefit from this product thank you so much for what you're doing once again thank you guys for leaving comments in the comment section i want to read some of your comments among the things we talked about in the last episode was the central bank going after aboki fx and so the first comment is from raf ade and this person said i think aboki fx forgot to give kickbacks to some cbn person and that's why CBN wants to treat Aboki FX as a scapegoat. <laughs> I'm sorry. You don't mean it, my brother. Be careful so that they don't come after you as well. <laughs> And the next comment is from Blend Orbit, and this person said, To be honest, I agree with what the federal government did. Though he may publish the rate, it really causes a frenzy with everyone referring to those rates in negotiation. This is a job for the federal government or authorized persons. Thank you so much. A lot of people also have that opinion. And like I said in the episode, actually, I said, I don't agree that one person should be the one dictating. But at the same time, though, when you get to black market, usually those prices are right. So I don't know how he does it. Anyway, thanks so much for your comment. Rashida Chaka said, I remember going to the bank for dollars to Naira exchange, but the bank called an Aboki FX for me to change the money for me. I was like, don't you guys do exchanges? Damn, that's low. That's like, what? Oh, unbelievable. Like, I can't believe they would do that. And then, of course, we talked about my father, Uncle Femi Fanikayo, the FFK. Clifford Oyamachi said, I thought that this man with his level of education and exposure will keep to his word, not knowing that he has no integrity of any kind. Mmm, my brother. In fact, he is valueless man. Ah, father, did you just call my uncle? Valueless. Hey, better luck. Busola Emo says, Where is Dino Melaye at a time like this? By now, he should have released a single for FFK. <laughs> Thank you so much, you guys, for always leaving comments. I love, love reading your comments. Also, I'd like to remind you guys that the 15% discount offered by Grace Ofure to anybody that is interested in purchasing part of her new estate, that is The Haven, is ending this weekend. I know, it was supposed to have ended. Yeah. <laughs> but when she came to America, a lot of people like spoke to her about extending it. So she did. She extended it, but it's ending this weekend. Please do not forget that you can pay in installments. And when you tell her that you're for me, that is when you get the 15% discount. Also, happy 25th birthday to my brother from another mother. That is Byron Chukwe Buka Ogona Oraja to my brother. For those of you that are wondering how he's my brother, like seriously, why why would you even ask that kind of question? We share the same mother. Do you not know Dr. Lovett Oraja? Just look at the resemblance. Eh? <laughs> Byron, my brother, you know, do well. Byron is almost done with med school actually, so he's about to become a medical doctor and he's actually working right now as a medical research specialist. So, congratulations, my brother. Happy birthday. Byron is making waves, making money, and making mommy and daddy proud. You know, do well, my brother. Send the party address. Lastly, I want to remind 
remind you guys that send wave is still the best way of sending money from the US, the UK, Spain, England, and Ireland to Nigeria, Ghana, Tanzania, Kenya, and Uganda. It is back to school time, and send wave is only charging a 1% fee for Nigeria. So make sure that you send the money through send wave you just send, because the person gets it instantly. They can take the money to the black market to change it and get a lot of money, or they can have the bank put it in their domiciliary account. So thanks to everybody that subscribed to Adiola's vlog. What? We now have 1,000 subscribers. As it Thank you so much guys. We are very very grateful. Thank you for helping our market. That is where you find all the other videos that have nothing to do with news. Like when I told my husband that I was pregnant. He was like, well, like he, you should have seen his reaction. Well, the reaction is in the video. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys, for subscribing. And please subscribe to this channel as well if you're yet to. All right, guys, it's Viru, and I'm keeping you right up in here. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And if you're yet to subscribe, we're watching you on Plasma TV. Press the subscribe button and the bell button. Until next time, I will see you all later. Peace out.